Hello everyone, welcome back to Philos Academy. In today's video, we're going to take the introductory part of STAT2. Now, STAT2 actually starts from confidence interval. That is, if you are able to cover discrete probability distributions and continuous probability distribution in STAT1. But if you were not able to, then I'm sure you start your STAT2 from discrete probability distribution. Now, all topics here are important, but the most important ones are binomial, Poisson and maybe multinomial distribution. Okay. And then for the continuous probability distribution, the most important one is the normal distribution. Okay. So if you start your start two from discrete probability distribution, I'm sure you end at two sample hypothesis tests. Okay. Also, depending on the program you read, you won't treat all the topics here in class. Now, for you to understand all the topics here properly. There is something you need to know, and that is sampling methods. Now, you've probably heard or you know some of the things I'll be talking about in this topic. But for you to understand it perfectly, you have to consider yourself as if you know absolutely nothing about this topic, so that you can have the opportunity to learn new things. Okay. Also, at the end of this video, I'll teach you how to use Microsoft Excel and Stata to do some of the things I'll be doing in in the topic okay so without wasting much time let's start now when we talk about sampling sampling is just a procedure a researcher uses to gather persons places or things to study from a population but there are some terminologies you need to know in this topic and the first one is elements it means each individual in the population whose characteristics are to be measured okay and then the second one is target population now this refers to the population about which information is required. So if you require information from Ghanaian farmers, then Ghanaian farmers is the what is the target population. Okay. Then sample is a portion, part or subset of the population selected for studies. Okay. So the part or the subset of the population that you've selected for your study is known as sample. And then we have sampling. Sampling is the process of choosing the research unit. Of the target population which are to be included in the study sampling frame is the list of all accessible members of your population so look at this now you took a sample of six from this population okay and then let's say you mailed your questionnaire to them or you interviewed them only four of them responded two failed to respond so that's a loss or non-response okay and then the four that responded is your, is your final sample or data. So before we go further, let's look at some of the reasons for sampling. The first reason to sample is that the time to contact the whole population may be prohibitive. Let's say you are vying for SRC president and you like to know your chance of winning the election. Then you send some of your team members to interview the students if they will vote for you or not. If you should question all students on campus, it will take you more time than maybe just getting a sample of 600 or 500 of them. Let's say there are six colleges in your school. You can take a sample of 100 from each college. That will take lesser time than interviewing all students on campus. Okay. Another reason to sample is that the cost of studying all the items in the population may be prohibitive. If you should interview all the 80,000 plus students on campus, you are going to spend more than just getting a sample of 600 of them and then question them. Another reason to sample is the physical impossibility of checking all items in the population. Let's say you want to know the average weight of files in Ghana. You and I know that it's not easy to get all files in Ghana, measure their weight and then find the average. So you can just get a sample, take their weight and then find the average. Okay. Let's say there are 16 regions in Ghana. You can get a sample of 10 from each region and then measure their weight and then find the average. Okay. Then another reason to sample is the destructive nature of some tests. Some tests are destructive. So if you should what use the entire population, you end up destroying what everything. It's better you use a sample for that. And then another reason to sample is that sample results are adequate. Now let's say you want to know the average price of what Tampico. Okay. Then if you should take all stores in Ghana and then asking them of the price of let's say medium sized Tampico, you are just wasting time. Because the price range won't vary too much. Okay. So at some places it's four cities, 50 pesos. Some places it's five cities. Okay. And that will repeat throughout the entire country. Okay. That four cities, 50 pesos, and five cities will be repeated. So it's better you just take a sample and then find the average price. Now let's look at the types of sampling. 
Now, we have two types of sampling. The first one is probability sampling, and the second one is non-probability sampling. The probability sampling is also referred to as random sampling. And the non-probability sampling is also referred to as non-random sampling. Now, when we talk about probability or random sampling, for this, every element in the population has a known probability of being selected. That is a non-zero probability. Okay. And then for the non-probability sampling, elements are selected on the basis of the judgment or convenience of the researcher. For the probability sampling, we have simple random, systematic, stratified, and cluster. And then for the non-probability, we have the convenience, the passive, quota, snowball, self-selection. We have many of them, but these are the popular ones, okay? So let's look at their meanings one after the other. Now, when we talk about simple random sampling, for this, elements are randomly selected from the population. Now, we have many ways of what? Of performing simple random sampling. But I'm going to show you some two formal ways of doing it. And then at the end of the video, I'll show you how to use Microsoft Excel and SETA to, uh, to select your sample tool. To perform simple random sample, the first method is... Let's say you want to know the opinion of regional ministers in Ghana on the current discrepancies in parliament on the mobilization and allocation of the COVID fund. Now, there are 16 regions in Ghana, meaning there are 16 regional ministers. Okay, then you would like to take a sample of four of them. Okay, using probability sampling, that's a simple random one. Now, you can take a paper and cut it into 16 pieces. Okay, then you number the regions. So, I have decided to number the regions in this manner you can number it anyhow you want to so volta region is number one greater Accra region is number two going okay then the 16 pieces of paper you write one two three up to 16 fold it properly you can place them in a box mix them together then you select your sample of four from the population of 16 one after the other to get the what the four sample you need then you interview those regional ministers okay now, another way of performing simple random sampling is by using the table of random numbers. So, I have two tables here. Now, to use the table of random numbers, you number your population as well, okay? So, I have a population of 16. So, I've decided to number them from 1 to 16. Now, the highest one is a two-digit number. So, for that matter, I want to make all the single digits, which is 1, 2, 3, up to 9, also two digits. And you know that 1 is the same as 0, 1. 2 is the same as 0, 2, okay? If the highest one is in 3 digits, like 750, you can make this 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 2, 0, 0, 3 going. And then the 10 will be 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 2 going, okay? That is if your population is up to 3 digits number, okay? Now, to use a table of random numbers, you can close your eyes and place your hand on one of the numbers. So let's say I select this. Now, you see that there are five digits here, okay? But I'll just use the first two digits because my numbering is just two digits, okay? So I'll use the first two digits, which is 08. Now, after selecting this, then you can decide to move horizontally or vertically, okay? But let me move vertically, then you see. Now, when I move to the next one, the next one is 90. My population is not up to 90, so I skip this. 23, I skip it. 610, so my population is up to 16, so I select this as my second sample. Then 53, no. 51, skip it. 33, skip it. 80, skip it. 02, then I select this as making it three samples. So I'm left with one sample, right? Then when you move to the next one, 810, skip it. 49, skip it. 76, skip it. 10. Then this will be your fourth sample. So we have 8, 16, 2, and 10. So let's check them. 8 is northern region, 16 is Alpha region, 2 is greater Accra region, and 10 is upper west region. So you interview the regional ministers of those selected regions. Okay. Now you can also decide to move horizontally. So if this is your first selection, the next one is 20. So skip it. 12. Then you select it. Second sample. 35, skip it, 67, skip it, 69, skip it, 10. So this is your third sample. Then you move to the next row, okay? So 97, skip it, 27, skip it, 90, skip it, 02. So this is your fourth sample. 
So we have 8, 12, 10, and 2. Okay, so 8, 12, 10, 2. So 8, Northern Region, 12, Bono East Region, 2 is Greater Accra Region, and 10 is Upper West Region. Okay, so you interview the regional ministers of those places. Now, when you close your eyes and then select a number, this 51. Since 51 is not part of your numbering, you skip it and then move on. Okay. Now, you can also use this table. You can close your eyes and select one of the numbers. So, let's say I choose this, 13. You can also check your time as at the time you want to select the sample. If your time says, let's say, 2, 3 a.m. or 2, 3 p.m., you can just say column 2, row 3 to get your first sample. Okay. So, 13 is my first sample. 13 falls within 1 to 16. So, I select it as my first. If it's not part, I skip it and move on. Okay. So, let me move horizontally here. Now, 41, skip it. 30, skip it. 56, skip it. 20, skip it. Let's move on. Then I move to the next row. 19, skip it. 2. So, 2 is my second sample. 69, skip it. Then I move on. 16, then I pick it. So, this is the third sample. Okay. Now, 00 is not part of my number, so I skip it. Then 14. So, I've gotten a sample of what? 4. 13, 2, 16, and 14. And interview them. I can also move vertically. So, let me move vertically for you to see. Now, I've gotten first sample, right? So, let's move on. So, this is the second sample, 12. 27, we skip it. 75, skip it. 95, skip it. 62, skip it. Let's move on. 13. Now, look at this. 13 has been selected already. Okay. Now, depending on the type of sampling you are doing, if your sampling is with replacement, then you can choose the 13 again. But if it is without replacement, you don't choose the 13 again. Let's say if your research is such a way that you can't interview one regional minister more than once. Okay. If you can't interview one regional minister more than once, then you need to skip this thirteen. But if you are allowed to interview one regional minister more than once in your sample, then you can choose the thirteen again. But I am skipping it. I don't want to interview one regional minister more than once. That is twice, thrice going on. I don't want to do that. So I skip the thirteen because I have one already. So we skip it. Thirty-one, skip it. Six, then I select. Sixteen. Okay, I select 16 too. So now I have my four sample 13, 12, 6, and 16. So 13, 12, 6, and 16. So 13 is Northeast region, 12 is Bono East, 6 is Savannah region, and 16 is Harfo region. So you interview the regional ministers of those areas. So that is it. So let's look at the second one known as a systematic sampling. Now, for the systematic sampling, it is such a way that every cave term. In the population is selected and this is how we do it now you take the entire population capital n okay divided by your sample size small n okay now if the population size is 500 then you write 500 then my population size is 16 because i have 16 regions okay so i use 16 then you divide it by now i need a sample of four okay so 16 divided by four now, 16 divided by 4 will give you what? 4. So, it means that I'm selecting every 4th position. 4th position. Now, to select every 4th position, this is what we do. Now, you go back to your number. Now, for the first 4 regions, you use a simple random method to get the first one among these first 4. So, you can use a table of random numbers or you cut four pieces of papers and write one to four on it then fold it and get one of them randomly just one now let's say i get central region as my first one okay now what you're going to do is that you move four steps away that is the fourth year the answer i've gotten here okay so you move four steps away from the first sample so we count one two three four so the second sample becomes western region then I move four steps away again. One, two, three, four. So that is upper east region. 
Then I move four steps away. One, two, three, four. So that is Western North region. So I've gotten Central region, Western region, Upper East region, and Western North region. So I interview the regional ministers of those areas. So that's how to perform the systematic sampling. Let's look at the next one known as stratified sampling. For stratified sampling, the population is divided into group of similar characteristics known as strata. Okay. Now you can divide the population of students on campus into male and female. Then you divide the male into group of students who like ice cream and those who do not. And then the female into those who like ice cream and those who do not. So now we have four groups. That is males who like ice cream, males who do not like ice cream, females who like ice cream, and females who do not like ice cream. That is four groups. So let's say you need a sample of 40 students, okay? Then you take your sample of 10 from each of the four groups to form your sample of 40. Now, to get your sample of 10 from each group, you have to use the simple random method to get 10 from the first, 10 from the second, 10 from the third, and 10 from the fourth one also. Okay, you use simple random method to do that by using your table of random numbers, or you can use the paper method too. Okay, then let's look at the last one here known as the cluster. So this one, the population has been divided already by naturally occurring situation. So you use all the members in one of the what of the division as a representative of the other. Then you question them. So let's look at the next one known as what non-random or non-probability sample. Now the first one we're going to look at is convenience sampling. This one you interview anyone that you accidentally come into contact with. Okay. For instance, you want to know the view of Christians on National Cathedral. Okay. Now you go and stand at the entrance of one particular church. Anyone that accidentally comes your way, then you interview the person. So that is convenient. Okay. So the convenience is also referred to as accidental sampling. Okay. Then the next one is purposive sampling. Now for purposive sampling, the researcher in his own opinion purposely chose respondents relevant to the research topic. Those who are relevant to your research topic. So if your research topic is on what? and farmers in ghana you choose farmers only okay so it's also referred to as judgmental sampling because it is the researchers in his own opinion that will choose those who are relevant to his what to his research topic then the next one is quota sampling for quota the researcher sets quotas of respondents to be chosen from a specific population group on certain basis such as let's say age group marital status or according to colleges in schools Let's say I need a sample of 70. I can decide to take 12 from College of Science, 5 from Engineering, 20 from College of Humanities and Social Sciences, and then 15 from College of Art and Beauty, 10 from Agric and Natural Resource, and then 8 from Health Sciences, okay, to form my sample. And then the next one is Snowball. Now, for this one, it is such a way that when you get only one sample, that particular sample will lead you to another sample. For instance, you are finding information pertaining to drug users and then you are able to get only one drug user after interviewing that particular drug user. That particular drug user can lead you to other drug users because a drug user knows his fellow drug users. You get the concept. So that particular drug user will lead you to other drug users. Then from there, you are getting more sample. The snowball is also referred to as chain or network sampling. Then the last one is self-selection. Now for the self-selection, the element to use as sample, you do not select them. Okay, maybe you advertise and they come themselves that what they have information on that. So that is self-selection. So let's look at the differences between probability sampling and non-probability sampling. So for probability sampling, it allows the use of statistics. That is, we test hypothesis. When we say hypothesis, hypothesis is a claim about a population. So when you make a claim about a population, you can test it by taking sample randomly, okay? And then you can estimate population parameters. When we talk about population parameters, we are talking about, let's say, population mean, population proportion, population standard deviation, population variance, and the likes. And then this eliminates bias because you didn't choose them on the basis of your own judgment or convenience. And also, probability sampling must have random selection of units. And then for the non-probability sampling, here population parameter is not of interest. It is cheaper, easier, and 
quicker to carry out. When choosing sample, we commit errors, okay? And there are two types of errors. We have sampling error and non-sampling error. Now, when we talk about sampling error, there's a difference between the result you would have gotten if you had used the entire population and the result you got from the sample. And when we talk about non-sampling error, so these are due to mistakes made in the acquisition of what of data or due to the sample observation being selected improperly. Let's look at the types of non-sampling errors. Now, the first one is errors in data acquisition. And this is due to maybe incorrect measurement taken due to faulty equipment or mistakes made during transcription from what primary sources or when you incorrectly record data due to misinterpretation of some terms used and also inaccurate responses to questions concerning sensitive issues. Non-response errors occur when responses are not obtained from some members of the sample. And then the third one which is selection bias is when some members of the what of the target population cannot possibly be selected for inclusion in the sample. So let's go to how to perform simple random sampling in Excel and Stata. So first, you check out for the Excel app on your desktop. Okay, so I have mine here. If you don't have it, you can search for it at the down here. So you just that Excel. Then you see the app, then you open it. Now after opening it, so you have a blank workbook here. So you click on it. And then enter your population data into it. But I have a file for my population already, so I click on it. So this is my Volta region. I've numbered it one, Vita Accra two, up to the last one. Okay. So I want to perform simple random sum. Now, to do this, the first thing you do is to go to the data tab at the top here. So you click on it. After clicking on it, then you look out for data analysis. So when you check through all the things here, you can see anything like data analysis, right? So it's supposed to be at the top right corner here, but it's not there. Sometimes when you click on the data tab, you see it there. But if yours is also not there like mine, this is what you do. You go to file. Then you go down to option. Okay. So I can see option here. Okay. So I click on more. So I have my option added down here. Option. So I click on option. So after clicking on option, you have this, then you click on add-ins. So after clicking on it, then you come to where the written go here. Okay, so you click on it. So as you can see, you have analysis tool pack, analysis tool pack VBA, euro currency to server adding. So you check the box for analysis tool pack. Okay, you check the box for analysis tool pack. Then you click OK. So after clicking OK, now let's go back to the data tab. When you come back to the data tab, so you can see that I now have my data analysis here. You see that? So you click on it. Now when you click on it, you ignore the rest and look for sampling. Look for sampling. So I have sampling here. This is sampling. So you click on sampling. Then, okay. The first one is saying input range. So to enter my input range, you just click here. Okay. And then select the first one. Then drag it downwards. To the last one okay so it's been selected then you click on the arrow back so you have your input range okay now this says labels now when i was selecting my input range i started from the first one which is number one i didn't start from the title if i started from the title of that column i would have checked this box so that i inform excel that the first cell is the title of that column so you ignore this then you come to random okay so you come here number of samples so it means you should enter the number of sample that you need so i need just four samples okay so i type four there and then when you come here now output option it means that where you want your sample to be displayed okay so if you want your sample display on this same sheet then you choose the first option okay but if you want your sample to be displayed on a new worksheet you choose the second one. It means that Excel will automatically create sheet 2. Okay, you, this is sheet 1. It will create sheet 2 and then paste your sample there. But if you choose the third option, which is new workbook, it means that Excel will create an entire new workbook and then paste your what, sample there. But I want my sample to be displayed on this same worksheet. So I'll choose output range. So you can select the range you want or just click on one of the cells. Then you click on OK. So you have 10 
six one fifty. It means you should take ten, which is upper west, six, which is savannah, one, which is volta region, and then fifteen, which is western north. Now, to use SPSS, now to use data, you also look out for the data app on your desktop. I do not have the data app on my desktop. Mine is pinned at the taskbar, so I open it. So I have my stata open. The file I'm going to select the sample from, I do not have it in stata form. So I want to import it from Excel. Okay. So I click on file, then I come to import, then I click on Excel spreadsheet. So I'm importing Excel spreadsheet. So I browse. So I have mine here. Depending on the location of your file, you look out for it. Okay. So I select it and then open it so after opening it you can see it here now stata is asking you that import first row as variable name import all data as strings now your first row is variable name okay so you have to check this box so you see that it brings it as variable name before you click ok now you have the data in stata 16 observations and two variables so you come to the command at the down here, then you type sample. Now you need four samples, so you click on four, then comma, then count. Then you can enter. So next, at the same place, you type browse. Browse, and then click on enter. When you click on enter, it displays what? The samples. So you have OT region, Western region, Central region, and Upper East region. So you have your sample of four. So you can interview the regional ministers of a sample of four regions here. Okay, so I'll end it here. If you are new to this channel, please do well to subscribe so that whenever I post more important videos like this, you can always have access to it easily. Thank you.